Hello everyone, uh, my name is Hunter Nelson, president of Tortoise and Hare Software, and I'll be walking through a WordPress architecture for beginners. So just a quick speaker bio here. Uh, again, my name is Hunter Nelson. Uh, I got my bachelor's in IT from Florida State in 2009 and my MBA also from Florida State in 2017. So two-time Florida State alumni, go Knowles. Uh, I've had 10 years in the software industry in both our operational and marketing roles, and you can see LinkedIn for a little bit more. Uh, just a quick couple things about Tortoise and Hare Software. What we do, our three pillars here are uh, digital marketing, and that's really where we use most of our uh, WordPress stuff, uh, custom software development, and then we also do some privacy compliance with regulations like the GDPR and you can visit us on the web to learn more there. So a little background uh, for this talk. Uh, after going to the WordPress Jacksonville meetup uh, several times, I noticed that there was a number of people who just felt really overwhelmed getting started with WordPress. They you know, see the admin section in the back end and they just kind of freeze up and uh, let it intimidate them a little bit. So I wanted to give a little talk here on the background of uh, WordPress and help some people see the forest through the trees a little bit. Um, this talk is for WordPress hobbyists and beginners. It's not a technical talk. We won't be looking at any sort of uh, application architecture from a, a code standpoint in PHP. We'll be looking at it more from uh, the files and uh, parts that make WordPress move. So for a minute, we'll take a look at uh, Stone Age web requests here. Um, and kind of back in the day before you know, programming really evolved, at the dawn of the internet, there was end users requesting their web pages in kind of a client-server fashion from their computer to a server. And those servers were uh, serving up static HTML documents. So what is a static HTML document? Uh, well, it, not anything too crazy. You could open up Notepad and copy paste some well established uh, boilerplate HTML and uh, save as and change the file extension from .text to .html and now you have an HTML document. And as you can see there's not really much going on here. The only thing that's really important is the uh, today is Sunday. And if we were to load that HTML document up in a browser uh, we'd see today is Sunday written out on the screen in a blank white screen and that's not very useful for days other than Sunday uh, so you know programming languages such as JavaScript and PHP uh, came along here and made us allow made us able to turn web applications from static to dynamic so we'll take a look at our, uh, doc, our HTML document here and I've made one small change to add some PHP so instead of saying today is Sunday, we're going to say today is, and then we'll have this little line of PHP here. And when that's run, we can see that today is Thursday, April 18th, 2019, which was the day I originally gave this talk. So uh, PHP allows us, again, to convert uh, web applications from you know, static to dynamic. And WordPress kind of takes this notion and uses PHP to build the entire web application. So everything that you see on your admin screens uh, and on the end user facing uh, stuff uh, is all built on PHP and kind of built in pieces and, and is very dynamic. The WordPress architecture from kind of a you know, software high level perspective is, is pretty simple. There's an app tier, which is just a fancy way of saying it's a bunch of PHP files, and behind it there's a database. So what this app tier does is really uh, has all the business logic, uh, but it also defines page structure and the logic for creating the web pages and uh, you know, making the WordPress application. The database is actually going to hold the content and configuration of your unique WordPress installation. 
um, and just for a second kind of diving into a little bit more by what I mean by that is so the app tier here is gonna help um, skeleton out these dynamic bits of um, the end web page and uh, they're gonna be loaded with content from the database which will actually get displayed in these kind of square areas um, such as the header and the widget and the sidebar. So just to kind of illustrate that a little bit further, um, we're taking a look here in the database. On the right we have a uh, freshly installed 2019 uh, WordPress page here and on the uh, front page you can see there's just a, a blog post that says welcome to WordPress this is your first post edit it or delete it and then start writing so this is what we see visually on the front and you can kind of see that there's really like a couple squares here if you kind of draw your mouse and then another one down here and uh, WordPress has raw HTML in the database and pulls that raw HTML and uses it to build dynamically this little block of uh, text on your WordPress site. So that's kind of how the database uh, stores and builds your web pages is, is storing HTML um, back in the database. So what else is in the database? Uh, it's the majority of your page and post content excluding media files such as videos and photos uh, it has it defines all your taxonomy, which is like the categories and tags of your posts that help you kind of organize them into groups, um, which is great for SEO. Uh, it stores your comments, it stores your user data, uh, the re registered users, their passwords, emails, etc., and then any configuration options you have for your WordPress installation, uh, such as your permalink structure, uh, date, time, site name, etc. Uh, it also stores plugin created tables. Most plugins will have at least uh, a, a small configuration table that they add to the WordPress database, but there can be all sorts of stuff that a plugin uh, adds into your database. Um, but by default, it's going to be relatively simple, and there's a screenshot of the base WordPress tables here on the right. Uh, one of the notable tables in the database is the options table and this is the one that you'll most likely encounter first and uh, as a beginner or hobbyist and probably the one the only one that you'll ever really need to modify um, under normal use and uh, that's just going to hold key value pairs of WordPress configuration options so you can see here that there's an option name and an option value um, and goes on uh, for many rows past this, but here's just a little snippet of what uh, that looks like. Um, one common use case of having to edit this is if you migrate your uh, site from one URL to another, you might need to come in here and update the URL for your WordPress site. Okay, so taking a look here at the app tier, um, all this, all these PHP files and these folders here are really what would be considered the app tier and this is kind of where people can just get a uh, total sticker shock and get really intimidated by WordPress when you know they get to this level um, but they don't have to because really the two important things in uh, WordPress installation is this WP content folder that I have a blue tick mark here by and this wpconfig.php the wp-config.php stores the database uh, connection, so that's the uh, core use case for editing this file is just to add your database connection in. Um, and most hosting providers will have already taken care of that for you, so most of the time you won't even have to do that. Um, and then your WP content is going to store your media files and most of the stuff that um, works in conjunction with the database to make your WordPress site a unique WordPress site and customize to your needs. Um, just a couple quick things to point out. Rule number one, do not modify WP Core. So WP Core is really everything except for those two folders that we talked about and this is these all really hold the magic that uh, builds the web page dynamically and allows us to administer a WordPress site with the dr drag and drop sort of uh, back end and uh, 
Microsoft Word like editor for posts and pages and you know all that sort of stuff so uh, unless you're an extremely advanced user don't modify Word uh, press core rule number two don't talk about Fight Club and you know once we kind of uh, keep those few things in mind and we boil that down it's really just these two files and folders and it's it's really not uh, so intimidating anymore after that just a quick look into the WP content folder um, most edits and customizations will be here uh, there's three folders and one file in these the index.php is not important um, you shouldn't need to modify that um, the plugins folder is typically going to be uh, where third-party customizations and code are created or if you create your own plugin you would go and put it in this directory um, Themes are really where, what controls most of the visual aspects or the external facing um, front end of your website. So when people actually go and browse to it that aren't like logged in and looking at the back end of the website, uh, that's really what the themes, is, uh, themes folder is going to build. And then the uploads folder is going to hold all your media files such as um, uh, pictures, videos, uh, and the like. Since these uh, plugins and themes are built on a kind of one-off basis and can be architected um, per the, you know, each theme developer or each plugin developer, there's really not a whole lot of point in going into the architecture of these because it's really going to vary. Um, but it's just uh, something to know is that your plugins and themes are going to be in this WP content folder, and this is really where the core of any file editing you might do. Um, if you need to even get there. All right, that's it. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, here's my contact info. Feel free to reach out, and I'd be happy to help you.